If we look at a fruit fly at light or in dark, we see that they move around a lot during the light and they rest during the dark. Interestingly, if you change a fruit fly from light dark cycles into constant darkness, you see that it still follows a 24 hour rhythm. It moves around for about 12 hours and then it rests for about 12 hours. This indicates that it has an internal biological rhythm, which is called the circadian clock. Seymour Benzer and Ron Kanopka decided to look for genes that affected the circadian clock in fruit flies. And they did this by searching for fruit flies whose 24-hour cycle was abnormal. And they were able to identify many classes of mutant fruit flies with abnormalities. Fruit flies, for example, that had no rhythm at all, that would just sort of fly around or sit still at random during the day and the night. Also, fruit flies that had a short cycle, when placed in constant darkness, instead of cycling for 20, in, over 24 hours, they would cycle over as few as 19 hours. And conversely, fruit flies whose cycle was long, where instead of cycling over 24 hours, they might cycle over 28 hours and, or more. So you can think of these 19 hours as sort of early risers, and these 28-hour guys as the flies who like to stay up late. Remarkably, all three of these mutations affected a single gene. There was one gene that, because of different kinds of changes in its activity, could either um, completely disrupt the rhythm, make it shorter, or make it longer. And that pointed to the fact that this gene must have a key role in determining the running of the circadian clock. And this gene is called PER for period. A series of molecular studies from many different labs has led to the elucidation of this circadian clock. Indeed, the PER gene is an important element of the circadian clock, but there are other molecules that are involved as well. These molecules function within the cell to regulate patterns of gene expression, and they regulate each other's gene expression through a negative feedback loop. So how this feedback loop works is that during the night, a transcription factor named clock drives the expression of the PER gene, identified from that early fly screen. Early in the night, PER is unstable, but over time it becomes more and more stable and builds up. Its buildup during the night causes it to eventually accumulate at sufficient levels that it can enter the nucleus early in the day. And when PER enters the nucleus, what it does is to inhibit the clock gene that is turning PER on. Well, eventually that means that PER is going to run down again because the clock gene is no longer leading to its transcription. And so as the day wears on, PER becomes less active and clock becomes active again. So that night, clock can begin to make PER again. This feedback loop between these transcriptional regulators and other regulators that determine their levels is similar all the way from flies to humans. Within the nuclei of our cells are the same kinds of transcriptional regulators oscillating in the same patterns between night and day as are observed in the fruit fly. How do these genes affect our behavior? Why are we active at different times? It turns out that in humans, although many cells have these clock genes and have their own circadian clocks, there are specific brain regions in which these clock genes are important to dominate behavior. And these brain regions are buried deep within the brain in an area called the hypothalamus, and in particular in a region of the hypothalamus called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. This is what you might think of as the master clock. The activity of the clock genes in the suprachiasmatic nucleus regulate the physiology and behavior of animals. And so we have here the PER and the clock gene oscillating in one region of the brain to then affect the outcome at the level of the whole organism. PER and clock were discovered initially in flies um, and mice, but remarkably, in humans, the exact same genes can lead to changes in human behavior. So there is a sleep disorder called advanced sleep phase syndrome in which people have what you might think of as an extreme early morning lark um, behavior. They get up earlier and earlier every morning. They can't stay up late at night. They keep falling asleep. The reason is that these people have mutations in human per genes that cause their clock to run too fast. 
They think that the day is only 22 hours long instead of 24 hours long, deep within their hypothalamus, and no amount of conscious control can help them to regulate all of their behavior accordingly.